Because of your dumb shit out here and your dumb friends, I spent the last hour and a half taking out the school. Coming up on Valley News Live at 6, what was behind this West Fargo teacher addressing a classroom of students? Plus, keep a good eye on your small children in West Fargo neighborhoods after a mountain lion was spotted. And the latest on the fire that broke out last night at a Park Rapids bean plant. Valley News Live at 6 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 6. Because of your dumb asses out here and your dumb ass friends, I spent the last hour and a half taking out the school. New tonight at 6 o'clock, you just heard explosive audio from a West Fargo teacher cussing students out this morning at Cheyenne High School. Students say this teacher and head boys track coach Jordan Oz became angry over the class senior prank, which included toilet paper and silly string, door handles slathered with Vaseline, and a smashed watermelon on the floor. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley spoke with one student today who says he was in the class during the outburst and says he wants the teacher held accountable. That was definitely the, the most brutal way I've been talked to by a teacher. Until this morning, Nick Davis says his econ teacher, Mr. Ouse, was one of his favorites, saying he never expected him to lose his temper so badly. Because of your dumb asses out here and your dumb ass friends, I spent the last hour and a half taking out the school. Those of you in here that participated, I saw your face. You were dumb enough to write your names in the parking lot. He just snapped. And it was like really surprising, like we were expecting him to just say that he was joking. Davis says he considers the prank pretty innocent, saying he did take part in some of it, but says he also confessed to administration this morning and was slapped with an hour of detention as punishment. And despite Mr. Oss's threats this morning, whoever participated will not graduate. So congratulations. Hope it was worth it. Even going so far as to personally call one of his students out. Pretty funny. Yeah, hilarious, right, Jane? You'll be lucky if you even graduate. West Fargo Public Schools says that's not the case, saying no senior who participated in the prank will have the police involved or be banned from graduating at the end of the month. I don't want him to lose his job, but I feel like teachers, especially in the West Fargo district, need to be held accountable. In West Fargo, Baby Hurley, Family News Live. West Fargo Schools says they have addressed the incident with Mr. Oz, but says because it is a personnel issue, the district cannot comment further. Many of you reached out to us about this story through our whistleblower hotline. If you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call us 237-6576 and leave your tip. Sad news out of the West Fargo Police Department today. A police officer passed away while on duty. Police Chief Dennis Otterne has said that the officer suffered a medical emergency. The name of that officer has not been released. West Fargo Police are asking you to keep an eye out for a mountain lion near the Cheyenne River. The large cat was spotted in the area of 26th Avenue and 1st Street East just before 8.30 this morning. Nearby Freedom Elementary School decided to keep kids inside for recess for the rest of the day. Police say the mountain lion hasn't shown any aggressive behavior, so they're just letting it go on its way. But they urge you to keep an eye out for your kids and pets. And if you see the mountain lion, call 911. Temperatures remained warm today, which is good, but we've had to deal with challenging winds at times. Let's go to Hutch to find out about tonight's conditions. Hutch? A little bit of blue sky showing up from our home of economy view in the Devil's Lake area. As we head into our evening hours, we are warm. It's 77 in Fargo, uh, so 81 up near the international border in Hallock right now. Some of the warmest temperatures once again in Roseau, cooler south and east where there's been more clouds and even a few showers heading in toward the Twin Cities. Now look at what we have going on with wind speeds right now. They're gusting strongest in the FM area where we have gusts to 40 miles per hour. They're from the south and southeast gusts to 39 miles per hour right here in the valley in Grand Forks as well. So hold on to your hat, but again, count on clouds, wind, and mild temperatures for your evening tonight. We do have a few clouds out there, sprinkles showing up in the far, far east. I think most of us stay dry and your planner shows temperatures because of the clouds and the wind really slow to fall. We'll be in the 60s by midnight tonight as again, the wind will taper off, become less gusty at sunset. Coming up, we'll have details on some much needed rainfall in the forecast. I'll tell you when your chances are going to be best in your neighborhood here in just a few minutes. Anxious to hear that. Thanks, Hutch.
Firefighters spent the night at a bean processing plant in Park Rapids, Minnesota, where fire caused extensive damage. It started around 8.30 last night at Green Valley Bean along Highway 34. Fire crews were called back out there around 3.45 this morning for another flare-up. No one was hurt and there's no word yet on a cause. A Fargo business is rebuilding after a massive fire last week and will be relocating in the meantime. Body Works Physical Therapy says their new building should be complete by October or November. The fire destroyed an entire strip mall, including Body Works and Gigi's Playhouse. Body Works will start seeing patients tomorrow at their new temporary location in the Prairie Stone Center on the corner of 45th Street and 17th Avenue South. The University of Jamestown PT program is loaning them equipment until their new items arrive. A Fargo man was sentenced to 10 years in prison for abusing his seven-week-old daughter. 37-year-old Roger Hellerud pleaded guilty to felony domestic violence, serious bodily injury stemming from the incident in December of 2019. Hellerud and his wife brought their daughter to Essentia Hospital for an injury to her mouth. Medical personnel soon discovered that the girl had subdural hematoma. Hellerud had been watching her da his daughter at the home by himself with their young son at the time that the injury occurred. A Fargo property owner has been charged with criminal mischief and disorderly conduct after attacking a Valley News Live reporter and photographer. The incident, as you can see, was captured on camera. Gary Reinhardt is accused of approaching the news crew as they were setting up for a live shot for their evening newscast. Video footage shows Reinhardt jabbing at the camera with a screwdriver. This incident happened at 1418 First Avenue North near property owned by Reinhardt that was ordered to be demolished by the city of Fargo. The U.S. Marshal Service is reviewing its security procedures to ensure the safety of the federal courthouse. The announcement comes in the wake of yesterday's death in a courtroom at the courthouse in Fargo. The FBI says 55-year-old Jeffrey Ferris of Belcourt used an easily concealable instrument to take his own life. He had been found guilty of reckless endangerment, terrorizing, and use of a firearm in relation to a felony crime of violence. The mandatory minimum sentence was seven years in federal prison. A Beltrami County deputy and his canine are being credited with the capture of two wanted men. Last Wednesday, deputies were called to assist with a vehicle pursuit. Officials say the suspect pulled into a business, then ran away, but was arrested after canine Mac managed to track him down. Then on Friday, deputies were called to a pursuit of a stolen vehicle on Irvine Avenue. The vehicle crashed into the side of Lake Julia, then the suspect ran away. Officials say canine Mac found him and he was identified as Dwayne Hart. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz was in White Bear Lake today to speak on the federal COVID-19 funds to support summer learning programs. Governor Walz said the agreement that they were able to come up with yesterday is to free up the funding from the American Rescue Plan that's meant to be used for enrichment education, for mental health services for students. Walz says this will help focus on a number of things for Minnesota to focus on kids, schools, it needed to focus on families, um, and it needed to focus on small businesses. And I think we we're able to do that in a bipartisan manner. I, I, I think when the story of this is all written, at a time that seems very contentious in our country, the recovery for Minnesotans, um, the system seems to be working. Since the start of the pandemic, Minnesota has reported more than 7,300 COVID-19 deaths and over 595,000 infections. More than 2.7 million people in the state have received at least a first dose of the vaccine. West Fargo Public Schools is expanding its summer food service offerings for children in the community. A weekly grocery box option is available to children between 0 and 18 years of age from June 3rd, uh, 3rd to July 29th. On Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1230 to 1 at Cheney Middle School and Liberty Middle School, no ID or proof of residency is required. No boxes will be distributed on July 6th uh, through the 8th or rather July 6th or 8th. For more information on daily meals and daily hot meals, you can head to valleynewslive.com and find this story. West Fargo's fire department is getting a new headquarters. The city has approved EAPC Architects Engineers to do the project, which will be located at 1201 10th Avenue East. Fire Chief Dan Fuller says out of the seven proposals, theirs stood out because of local focus and statewide reputation of building fire stations. The goal is to have it completed by the spring of 2023. Later on Valley News Live at 6, what's being done to modernize the way the court system in North Dakota deals with juveniles?
And yesterday, temperatures ranged from around 80 to 90 degrees up in Roseau. It was warm again today, mid 80s for Roseau, near 80 here in the FM area. We do have a chance of some rain, and for some of us over the next several days, hopefully some improvement to drought conditions. Your hour by hour forecast is next.